Welcome back, everyone. We have an update from Gossamer Bio Inc. Trades on the NASDAQ under the symbol GOSS. It's a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company focused on the development commercialization of serolutinib for the treatment of pulmonary hypertension. Please welcome CFO and COO Brian Gerardo. Nice to see you again, Brian. What's your update today? Good to see you too, Anna. Thanks for having us. I think the update that's most critical is that we announced last week that we have completed screening for the phase three global registrational study, the Procera study, uh, which we now expect to have top line data in February of 2025. Uh, we expect to complete enrollment here in about a week and a half. Uh, we are very, very excited that the enrichment strategy we were using to ensure we got patients that would respond to Sarah Luda at week 24 uh, via six minute walk uh, were obtained. And in fact, we feel very, very confident that we have truly one of the sicker patient populations that's ever been studied in a clinical study in recent years for pulmonary arterial hypertension. This is critically important because, and you remember our phase two study, which was conducted during the height of the pandemic, enrolled a much less sick patient population. So the treatment effect was not as significant as we hoped for. So needless to say, the combination of our enrichment program, as well as going to 31 different countries has allowed Gossamer to put its thumb on the scale to assure that we will have a positive study here that we'll announce in February of 2026. Wonderful. Well, that's good news and a good update. So give us a, a little bit more of a thorough update of the clinical trial process. Where are you? So again, we closed screening. Uh, there was so much uh, enthusiasm for the study that we originally were hoping to enroll 350 uh, uh, folks will enroll more than that. Uh, as you know, Anna, when you've got lots of enthusiasm, you can't just shut things down because you will uh, certainly anger uh, important constituents and physicians. And that's critically important for us at Gossamer because we also announced in the fourth quarter of this year, we will uh, begin a second global registrational study for pulmonary hypertension associated with interstitial lung disease, which we've talked about in the past, which is roughly two times the size of the PAH market, yet only one approved drug, uh, inhaled Tybasal, only approved in the United States. So truly a very, very important uh, disease area for us to go into with very little competition. It's why we're ensuring that the folks that wanted to put their patients in the phase three study for PAH, we let them in because we wanna keep our customers happy. And can you talk a little bit more about that? Give us some more background information about those patients in the phase three and PAH. Why is that so important? Well, because most of the patients, especially here in the United States, that are the physicians that treat pa patients with PAH also treat uh, patients with pulmonary hypertension with interstitial lung disease. So if you're going to roll into another global registrational study, you would like to have those physicians uh, knowing that Gossamer took care of their PAH patients and will take care of the PHILD patients. So uh, a happy clinical uh, community uh, leads to, I think, better timeframes and long-term robust sales. And Gra Gossamer recently presented preclinical data at the American Thoracic Society Conference in San Francisco. So how was that presentation and how was it received? The presentation was received very well because it was further scientific evidence that serolutinib uh, through its multi-kinase inhibition is truly a groundbreaking breaking and first-in-class uh, therapeutic. American Thoracic Society, or ATS, is probably the biggest meeting of the year for pulmonary arterial hypertension and pulmonary hypertension uh, with interstitial lung disease in the United States. And I would tell you the enthusiasm uh, over the four days here in San Francisco for Sarah Lutnib and Gossamer, given our safety, our efficacy, and potential for what we could do for patients was extremely, extremely high. And is there potential for this treatment beyond PAH? Certainly. As I said, we'll be going into pulmonary hypertension with interstitial lung disease. And along with our partners at Chiesi Pharmaceuticals, we're looking at, and this is why this preclinical data was very important, uh, looking at possibilities in idiopathic uh, pulmonary fibrosis, uh, which is, uh, or known as IPF, which is another significant market. Uh, if PAH is roughly 50,000 people in the United States, PHLD is roughly 100,000, IPF is in the millions. And again, significant unmet medical need. And we think that uh, certainly serolutinib is that, is that drug that could be truly a portfolio within a compound. And what is Gossamer's cash situation like? 
we ended the quarter with about $230 million of cash. But again, I think what's important, our relationship with KZ Pharmaceuticals is critically important because other than Procera, everything will be a 50-50 cost share. Just to have the deep pockets of KZ, the deep experience that they bring uh, for global markets outside the United States, it really is a match made in heaven. And can you talk about what is protected with IP delivery formula? How is this protected? We have composition of matter patent, uh, composition of matter patents, uh, including a five-year extension that would take us to 2039. New formulation work that we're working on with our friends at Kiesi could take us to 2042, 2043. So quite some time, and hopefully, Anna, when our patents expire, you and I won't still be doing this crazy business. <laughs> And a question from Keon asking if patients have seen inflammation come back after it's shrunk. So it's a, a very good question. Um, we <laughs> have seen um, to date our open label extension data from our phase two study, as well as things from phase one B, have patients out over five years where both the inflammation, fibrosis, and the proliferation, that cellular overgrowth that happens in the vasculature of the lungs, um, has certainly uh, been abated. And if anything is true, we've seen patient, patients be able to resume near normal life. All right. Closing remarks from you today about Gossamer. The, the, the time is coming for us to be able to report the top line data from our phase three study. We've done everything we possibly can to ensure uh, the probability of success is very high. And so certainly please stay tuned as we give updates to the balance of the year and into early next year. Wonderful. Thank you, Brian, for this update, and we'll see you again real soon. Thanks, Anna. All right, everyone, we'll be right back.